Hello folks, I'm back here at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. on the National Mall. And I know I've made several videos on these palms and I, uh, I made a video just a couple of days ago, but you know what, I'm by here a lot and I, I don't want to pass up an opportunity to make a video on these incredible palms, especially this one, because you don't, you don't realize, I mean, the, the success rate of these is just, I mean, a lot of them die. A lot of them die from the cold here. They are not foolproof. So seeing one this big, and I know it did suffer in like 2008 or nine, I think, uh, from the winter there, but it's, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's pretty much foolproof now. It's well established, 20 year old, planted in the year 2000. And uh, you can see at least 12 feet tall. Anyways, uh, I wanted to focus this video mostly on, on cold hardiness because, uh, well, I wanted a topic to make this video on because I didn't just want to keep making a video on these palms. Um, so my, the topic's cold hardiness. I just wanted to show you because these are the three most cold uh, tolerant, cold hardy palms in the world. So first, of course, we have the beautiful windmill palm. They move the plaque over here. Um, here are Trachycarpus fortunae, windmill palm, um, native to China and um, native to the mountains of China where uh, it does snow. So they're native up to above 700, uh, 7,000 foot elevation. So very high in the mountains. And you can see this one um, is just doing so well here. And you can see, uh, as is typical with them, the base actually usually gets, uh, the base is usually thinner than the top here. So you can see it's just so thin and it looks like, I mean, it looks like it could like topple over. And you can see the root ball is exposed as is typical with these palms, very fibrous trunk. And some people defiber it. They take all the fiber off because I think it looks nice. It looks more tropical, certainly. But um, the fiber certainly pr provides some sort of insulation. So um, I like, I I'm personally a fan of leaving palms in their natural state and not altering just the way they look because I, I, I don't know. I, I think defibering them is cool, but in, in, in an area where you really need the heat here for these palms, I think uh, giving them this, leaving them with this natural layer of uh, insulation, I think is great. So if you can see the leaf bases form these, uh, you can see they're just all along the trunk. These are all the old leaf bases, uh, like used to, used to be those. And um, you can see just how tall it is. I mean, I go up to like here on it and you can see how, how, just how much more palm there is. Huge, huge palm, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, windmill palm. So this is the third most cold hardy palm in the world. The windmill palm, Trachycarpus fortunae. And uh, here, I'm gonna go over the second most cold hardy palm first. Um, uh, we have the um, Sable Miner Dwarf Palmetto. Uh, and this is native to the uh, southeastern United States, subtropical southeast. And um, beautiful palmate leaves. You can see they've got like some dew on them and um just just gorgeous and uh these are some nice old ones probably as old as the windmill over there you can see just a good view of it beautiful um and the, the camera can't do it justice if you're a palm lover and you're in dc definitely come here not just to visit the museum but to see the palm because they're incredible beautiful uh, palmate leaf look at this lovely and then look at the trunks on this this is like when i was in congaree national park this is what they look like i mean the, the trunks i barely saw any trunks bigger than this because these are these are some pretty nice little trunks they've got on them and they're not so little. They're uh, pretty big for a sable miner, especially in DC. These are some of the only trucking sable miner I know of. And you can see that this is a volunteer here, this little one, self-seated, beautiful, lovely trunk there. So this is the second most cold hardy palm in the world. So as I said, this is not really a foolproof palm here. Sable miner is starting to get foolproof. That is, that's just about foolproof here. And um, I've never heard of a sable miner dying here. I've heard of a lot of windmills dying here. So that's just about foolproof. And then next up, we have this uh, and this and this. These are all the same palm. So you see this is Sable Minor here. And then this one here, this giant bush, this is a uh, needle palm named because the uh, bases of the trunks uh, have little needles on them. You can see in there, nice big trunk. So this is a very, very uh, giant needle palm, about nine, 10 feet to the top. So this is pretty big. Obviously the one at the uh, National Arboretum is exceptional. That's probably definitely the biggest one in the DC area, I would say. Um, but these are pretty big. And then these ones are smaller, but they're still big, at least four feet and uh, getting some nice trunks on them. And then these are not palms, of course. These are just um, musabaju stumps, uh, Japanese fiber banana or hardy banana. And they chop them down because they sort of wilt away in winter. And people don't like that brown look, so they chop them down because they'll grow back in spring. So you can see every winter, I know the Aerospace Museum chops theirs down. And look at this, self-seated palms here. Looks like, um, let's see, what is this one? Huh, looks like a uh, needle palm to me, but uh, very nice, lovely, lovely. 
So these are all three, these are palmate species. Palmate species tend to be hardier than uh, pinnate species. And uh, the hardiest palms are uh, all, you'll have a lot of hardy uh, palmate species before you reach any hardy pinnate species. So these are all palmate, meaning that the leaves look like the palms of your hand, all branching out from that central point instead of pinnate, like a, all branching out from a, a stem. Um, anyways, so this is the windmill palm. Uh, this is the uh, uh, dwarf palmetto over here. And then this is the uh, needle palm. Beautiful trunks on this. Look at this big trunking needle palms. That is lovely. And you see the needles in there. Anyways, this is the most cold hardy palm in the world. 100% bulletproof here. There's one, I believe at the, the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens. Uh, it, uh, maybe it's, it might be Bronx. Anyway, anyways, I know, there, I know there's long-term needle palms in New York. So that's, that's uh, what I was trying to convey. That they're very cold hardy. All three of these are very cold hardy. And these two, needle palm and dwarf palmetto, are bulletproof here. So uh, they can survive uh, any winter here. And uh, thanks for watching, folks. These are some incredible palms. I mean, this is a really remarkable windmill. I love seeing it. It gives me hope for mine, seeing a long-term windmill in the DC area. So, and uh, here we go. Anyways, thanks for watching, folks. This is a, a really cool, um, cool place. And I love how the Smithsonian experiments with palms because, uh, you know, they, they, they took a risk here. They planted one at the castle, Smithsonian Castle, the headquarters of Smithsonian. That died. They planted one here and it survived. And it's, you know, a, such a beautiful palm now. So thanks for watching, folks. I better get going. But um, these are the three most cold, hardy palm species in the world. And uh, they're self-seeding here, and uh, which is pretty cool. So thanks for watching, folks. Stay tuned and have a good one. Happy New Year, folks.